This show is not intended to offend, harm, belittle, accuse, instigate, objectify, etc. Any person, place, thing, establishment, entity, or business of any kind, color, creed, faith, belief, condition, creation, etc. On this show, I will speak my mind and give my opinion on the topics at hand. Any offense in anything taken out of context is your fault. What's up, what to do, man? It's your boy, Daddy Gamer, a.k.a. Player one, the guy himself, a.k.a. The unofficial official professional in all things video games and technology. Here with another episode of The Gamer's Den. If this is your first time here. It's the show where I go over video game news, tech news, and a little bit of everything else. And we start this thing off with a thing called Level 1 News. Yes, sir. First and foremost, appreciate everybody for coming to the show. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe wherever you are at. And if you are new here, you have a plethora of options to where you can, uh, what's the word I want to say? Digest the show. All right, let's say that. You can go on devthegamer.com. You can watch this show, High Score Sundays, Cannot Beat the Time, The Indie Corner, plus more to come. You can watch all of these shows on devthegamer.com, devthegamer.com for everybody. That's where you can go. Also, any music I've put out or whatever is on there as well. And we have books as well. I have books. So you can get the Amazon discount method. That's 10 bucks. Go ahead and get that as well. This is all on devthegamer.com. So make sure y'all go on devthegamer.com. We are also, the show is also available on Hideout TV and Rumble. So, if you don't watch it on devthegamer.com, you can also go to one of those places. Also, we are available on podcasts. This is Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Samsung, etc., etc., for the audio experience. So, if you want to have the audio experience, you can go over there as well. I'm slacking on the audio experience. What the hell? But I'm going to get y'all straight, so don't even worry about it. So, today we do have a couple articles to go through. And we have something that's not really important, but it's intriguing that we're going to talk about later on. So let's go ahead and get into it. Headline reads, study reveals Nevada, the most video game obsessed state in the country. What the hell? I know nobody saw this coming and nobody. I'm pretty sure nobody saw this coming as it being Nevada. So we do have this information in this article. Um, you know, breaking down Nevada being, you know, the most obsessed with video games, as it says in the headline. I don't know about obsessed, but they're probably more inclined or more interested in uh, comparison to other states. So let's go ahead and get into it. A new report finds Nevadans are struggling to keep their eyes off the screen. Online site, I'm a puzzle, analyzed thousands of gaming related search terms to find the state with the most interest in video games. According to the report, Nevada takes the top spot with 7,600 average monthly gaming-related searches per 100,000 population. What the hell? The most searched terms in the state were PS5, Steam, and Nintendo Switch. Falling behind Nevada are Georgia and New York. The state with the least interest in video games is Hawaii with 4,800 average monthly searches. So... This what this means. Uh, we're going by average surveys, right? I say a service, average searches, and this is per one hundred thousand people. So, say you live in a state, you live in a city somewhere, and there's five hundred plus thousand people. You know that would uh, a city, not a state, but um, and that's that's metropolitan area, right? Big, robust city, metropolitan. You got bus lines, you got taxis, Ubers everywhere. You got e-bikes and scooters all over your stuff, right? You got a couple hundred thousand people in. So you got some uh, fortification. and uh, What's the word I'm looking for? The words is escaping me today. Uh, infrastructure. That's the word I'm looking for. So this is per 100,000 people. So if your city has 300,000 people, you anywhere between 14 to 2100. Um, tw- yeah, 2100. No, 21,000. I'm sorry. In between 14,000 and 21,000 video game related searches a month. Hold up. Now, that is a lot, you know, give or take. But if you want to go on a state average, I would think California is up here because California has a very big population. But at the same time, 
you know, who knows, man, that it could be a big population, but everybody in California probably not, you know, pressed or worried about video games. You know, this is like, I, you know, we all know California is a place to go, especially for uh, certain industries, especially entertainment. So you might have some tournaments there. You might have, you know, headquarters there, give or take. But um, yeah, you know, I thought this was pretty cool. You know, we get to go about this. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get to the next thing in level one news, right? Now, this thing here, the next thing in level one news, this is going to start to build up the overall conversation. I just want to let y'all know that because y'all know how the last episode I said, which side are you going to be on? You know, I know that was that, right? Now, the other, I guess, the other mirroring conversation that that would be um, just the audience, right? Who is being targeted or who these games are made for? And y'all know I keep, I talk about this all the time. And it's like, yo, they're making these games because they know the kids here or this age group, that age group. They're going to buy this. They're going to do that. And this is one of the main reasons why I don't really cover shows as much. I don't talk about TV shows or movies like that. It's because that stuff is it's just social commentary. I really don't care about that much. Video games and this stuff is more important because video game technology is video games, video game technology, X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. But when you want to talk about what people are playing and actually putting their time in and the way technology is going to be integrated within the next 10 years, this matters because when everybody is on the Oculus and you got your VR headset on and or some way, shape or form, you in the you in the metaverse or you in some virtual world because they have now combined the physical and the virtual, you're gonna be like, man, this this man, Devin, Dev, he was he was on the ball, he was on the money, he was there every step of the way. He already was there, he in the future. You're gonna be like, hold up. Hey. Headline reads Millennials spend more time playing video games than Gen Z and teens. New study finds. What the hell? Now, I know this might be another piece of shocking news and information to y'all. Well, you got to understand this. You know, this all depends. You know, a lot of millennials are older. We adults now, you know what I'm saying? Then you got the Gen Z and the teens, they're a little younger. I don't think they have Gen Z and under have more time to play than millennials. Like, we already got the whole schedule and our whole week mapped out for the most part. Go to work, do this, come home, I ain't got nothing else to do, I'm gonna play the game. And because we didn't already figure this and worked our own situations out, it's like, okay, I can go work here, I can do this, I can do this, I can do that. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the article. Millennials are the largest untapped market the video game company should be focusing on. Per a new study from Vandom, which finds the generation spends more time gaming than both Gen Z Teens. What the hell? According to fan community platform and entertainment entertainment company Fandom's annual Inside Gaming report, which was released Thursday, quote unquote, despite teens and Gen Z spending more time gaming than they did last year, older generations of players are spending more hours per week gaming. End quote. Compiled based on propri yeah, proprietary user data from Fandom and a global study that examines how gamer motivate gamer motivations and behaviors vary by generation. The report found that 52% of millennials surveyed rank playing video games as their top interest, and 40% of millennial of fandom's millennial audience spends over 22 hours per week gaming, compared to only 29% of teens. What the hell? So this is kind of that's going into what I was saying, right? You know, half of the millennials is playing games, or their interest is in playing games, 40 to 50 percent. So this is mainly because, well, we didn't did everything under the moon and back. We didn't did everything under the sun and have fun. We didn't did all this. So now, all right, I don't really need to do nothing. The economy going to ish. All right, well, guess what? I, especially if you're a man, if, especially if you're a man, you, 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 you already cool. All right, well, I got, my, I got my money secure. I got my incomes coming in. I got... All this stuff, I can pay my bills, I can do this, I can do that. All right, cool. I don't really need to do nothing else. I can save my money and splurge on less. And that's how it really go, right? So um, let's go ahead and continue. Additionally, Fandom's report found that, quote unquote, influence to purchase brands that have investments in the gaming space gets stronger with age. End quote. As Fandom's millennial users are at least 24% more likely to be, quote unquote, 
heavily influenced, end quote, to buy games compared to the average family user. That doesn't mean studios and developers should start sleeping on the younger generations. While 45% of gamers overall spend more time gaming than they did a year ago, and millennials are the demo playing the most of anyone, the biggest growth in overall time spent gaming versus last year was seen among teens up to 63% and 48% respectfully. Or, yeah, respectively. I said respectfully. <laughs> According to Fandom's Inside Gaming Report, the younger generations of gamers are more interested in competitive gaming and making social connections, while older gamers gravitate more towards games with potential for intellectual stimulation. Among gaming genres, adventure sandbox, survival, and fighting games are most, are most popular with fandom gamers of all age. Teens, however, are most, it says tweens, but I'm saying teens. I'm not, I'm not doing all that. Tweens, uh, teens, however, are most likely to play Battle Royale, 49%, racing, 46%, survival games, 39%, while millennials gravitate toward MMO, 41%, strategy, 27%, and RPG, 26%, genres with games like Elder Ring or World of Warcraft. The biggest driver for Gen Z and Millennials are character and storyline, which rich complex with rich comp rich and complex backgrounds, while younger gamers gravitate more toward competitive games with an emphasis on coordinated teamwork. So, like I said, this is going to pretty much be the conversation we have going forward here. And we're going to be dipping in and out of it and we're seeing why this this information is very important. You're going to see why. Now What's important to, to, uh, to highlight here is who's playing what in the percentages, right? So if the younger generations, Gen Z and teens, 50% of them are playing battle royale games, racing games, and survival games. So this is the PUBG, the Fortnite, the Call of Duty Battle Royale, the Apex, the Valorant. This is all of that. This is also a survival game. So this is probably The Last of Us, Dying Light. Uh, Dead by Daylight. This is probably all of these games. Actually, these are these games. And you got strategy games, so this could be anything from Jenga to word puzzles to whatever. Uh, no, yeah, no, that's that's all they play. They don't play that. The millennials are playing MMO games, strategy games, and RPG games. So you got to understand there's a difference in genres that everyone is playing, and y'all could clearly tell. And this article proves and or just validates that. Uh, okay. There that this information is kind of right because if you've been listening to the show, you know that I've been pushing more towards MMO strategy stories, or that's what I really push for in all games. So when I'm talking about a Fortnite, or I'm talking about this, or I'm talking about a, a PUBG, a Fortnite, Valorant, whatever, like what is the story? Y'all just putting out games with no story modes. Like what is this? What the hell? But as y'all see, how right am I? I'm right there on the money. Look, when you know, you know. Plus, you got to act like you know when you know it. So I, I so you got to understand that. So with that being said, this is going to do it for level one news. Appreciate y'all for sticking around this long for level one news. We got level two news coming up. But first, we got to go ahead and run our commercials. Gaming. Art. Music. I believe these are some of the most potent forms of expression. I love to create and bring things to life. Can't forget fashion. How we appear lets the world know who we are. Everything I do is who I am. And I'm sharing that with the universe. Welcome to my world. Yes, sir. Make sure y'all follow me on all socials. And once again, devthegamer.com. Go on devthegamer.com. Go ahead, have a fun, whack, you know, crack yourself out, knock yourself out on the website. Uh, tap in. Mm, excuse me. Make sure y'all go ahead, tap in. You can watch this show. You can watch all the other shows and all of that. YouTube.com slash devthegamer for any and all clips. You know, clips of this show is on YouTube. So if you can't catch it on the website, you can't catch it on any other platform that we own. Or that I'm on, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And clips are uploaded weekly. We have clips uploaded weekly all the time. I keep saying we, and it's only me. I don't know why. <laughs> but um, let's go ahead and get into it with level two news, the main topic.
Yes, sir. Level two news, the main topic. So as I said, you know, we're going to continue on having this conversation because we got news of a game being delayed. And I want y'all to take a guess before I pull it up. Go ahead, take a guess. Do, 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 do. Okay, bitch, you guessed it. Shout out to OG Mako. Headline reads Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, delayed till February. Listen, I told y'all about this game. I told y'all about this game and I told y'all what it was. They killed the game before it launched. So now look what they got to do. Push it back. I don't know what I said. I might have said y'all need to push the game back. I could have said something completely different, whatever the case. But nonetheless, everybody knows that they need to go back to the drawing board and rework this whole game. Because once that battle pass stuff leaked, it kind of turned people off. And the fact of the matter is, it's enough of that already because we just talked about that. In the previous article in Level 1 News, we just talked about that. Because now, who are you targeting? Who is the target? Right, see, this is the conversation. Who is the target? See, which side you can be on, you know, that's that was the last episode. What Choose your side. Now, who's the target? See, you got to figure these things out. You got to know what these things, you know, you got to figure these things out. You got, you know, it's chestnut checkers. Who is the target? You put in a battle pass in this game. Now, let's go ahead and get into the article. Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has been delayed to next year following recent rumors that it wasn't going to make its May 26 release date. The superhero co-op shooter will now launch on February 2nd, 2024. Developer Rocksteady posted a short message on Twitter stating it wants to, quote unquote, take the time needed, end quote, to ensure the, to ensure the best possible experience. Okay, so I'm gonna read with they uh, I'm gonna read the uh, statement. So reading the statement. <clears throat> Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League will now launch on February 2nd, 2024. We have made the tough but necessary decision to take the time needed to work on getting the game to be the best quality experience for players. Thank you to our amazing community for the continued support, patience, and understanding. There is much more to share in the months ahead, and we look forward to seeing you in Metropolis next year. Here we go. So this is what they had to say, man. This is what they did. And um, yeah, man, uh, Rocksteady, I'm glad y'all put more time into it. Y'all can't go out like this, number one. Let's just, um, you know, put a rep, let's go reputation wise, kind of. Or not really reputation, but you can't follow up the Batman Arkham series with something like this. You can't do that. It's just going to look bad on your end. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be completely honest. It's going to look bad on your end. You put out Batman Arkham Origins, Arkham Knight. Arkham City, Asylum, all these games, and they were great. It's a great franchise. It's a great series. We don't mind you putting out different games, and we don't mind you trying different things from a fan standpoint. We don't mind that. But we don't want you just grabbing at the most popular thing either because that's how a lot of these games end up failing and going down the drain, i.e. multiverses. Everybody thought multiverses was out. No, it was in beta version. Like, What do you not understand that? But the fact that they ran the beta version live like that for a year is kind of unheard of in itself. So I don't know what they was trying to do. I don't know what their plan was with that, what WB and their plan was with that. But if they got to make some tweaks, okay, then you had a year for some tweaks. Y'all going to have, you know, because this is all WB, right? Y'all got to understand this is all Warner Brothers. This is all, all these IPs. So with multiverses, y'all going to have to like come out in a in an interview or something and just let it be known why y'all let the beta run for a year or two then on top of that what changes y'all made and what you know did y'all make the experience better what did you change about it you know what was like what took a year plus almost for the game you know for y'all to figure out to go back to the drawing board and be like all right now let's work we need to know that and it's the same thing with suicide uh kill just elite rock steady y'all cannot I understand, you know, it's popular. All the comic book stuff is popular right now, but we need y'all to produce and come with the quality that we know y'all for. The Batman Arkham games were quality, gameplay, outstanding, stories, great. Some people will say, eh, but in my opinion, great. I had the pop filter. Great. Now, 
you put out this. We're expecting the same quality. Like this and um, Gotham Knights have WB in question when it comes to the games because we understand that certain gameplay uh, mechanics are popular right now. We understand certain genres and certain styles of gameplay is popular right now. But this is one of these, like DC, certain types of games, like their multiplayer games is cool, but we need to keep that co-op multiplayer x-men um marvel ultimate alliance like we need to keep that type of that that type of experience in when it comes to suicide squad kill the justice league not battle pass online all the time what no 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 don't do that but let's uh continue in the article here suicide squad kill the justice league put players in the shoes of heart okay blah 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 okay yeah, yeah, yeah. so um yeah, they're just talking about what the game is. We already know what the game is. So, um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just my whole thing on it. Y'all need to go back to the drawing board. If I had to give my input last time I'm mentioning this, retcon the battle pass, retcon the battle pass. Don't nobody need the battle pass. We do not want battle pass in this. And give us an offline experience. Give us an online and offline experience. Do both. We would appreciate it. But when you're talking about co op, and if you want to, and, and since this is a game that's going to focus on co-op play, you might as well just give us both an offline experience and an online experience. That way, if we play, if you got somebody, a gamer or, or a fan that plays by themselves, they can play by themselves. And if they want to play online, they can go online matchmaking. So I would say online matchmaking, either four players or two players with the other two play with the other two characters just being CPU controlled, being NPCs. and. You know, and then that'd be a great um, online experience. And then maybe do like some online missions or you could just do missions. However, you know, figure that out. But that's that's the way you should go with the online experience. With the offline experience, uh, it should be a little open world, maybe or semi open world. I'll take semi open world, semi open world with, um, you know, with you know, with a lot of quests to do free reign, stop bad guys or something. Or if this is just going to be story based and you really can't explore, then make sure that is playable, replayable, replayable, replayable in some way, shape or form. Like, like I said, semi open world, just semi open world. We need semi open world with this. Now, the reason why they were, um, they're delaying this ultimately is because everybody well, one of the factors because, well, we all got upset about the game. Okay, now, next thing in level two news. Headline reads, North Dakota Senator wants to see PlayStation's exclusivity deals. Yes, we have a senator throwing his opinion and, and stuff in the mix now. So if you don't know, um, Sony has been uh, putting out a lot of statements and or have been vocal about the Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard. And it's been a lot of this stuff going on and there has been headway. And I think it's been stated that by the end of this month, the CMA will find it or have some type of judgment on the deal. With that being said, a lot of people are on the side of Microsoft. They, they said, Hey, just let them have call of duty. Let them get, you know, let them get some piece of call of duty. They said they wasn't going to make it exclusive. But Sony isn't worried about right now. They're worried about 10 plus years from now where, okay, when all these deals are up, are, they're, they're going to keep it to, for themselves, they're going to keep it for themselves. Because the reality of it is we don't know if Call of Duty is going to work on Nintendo on a Nintendo Switch. That's yet to be seen. And on top of that, okay, it's on get, we could put it on Game Pass. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. What about the cloud platforms? What about GFN? What about Booster Roy? What about... You know, what about these big prominent cloud gaming platforms? Like, what about them? What about, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot that, that goes into this deal. And Xbox, they out here slinging promises and deals like it ain't nothing. Now, if you're slinging deals for some of your other IPs that you already got in games that's already out, that's one thing. That's cool. You could just port them and put them over there. But when you're talking about certain things and IPs that have yet to be seen or proven, i.e. Call of Duty, especially on Nintendo Switch, that being my main example, you 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 kind of like all right you you fishing it's like it, it looked like if i know better if you somebody who know better and sony is in the position of they they know better 
we know you going to do that and we're not putting it past you. Even if I'm going to end up being wrong, I'm standing on this hill and I'm taking this L if it, if it so happens in the future. You're going to make it exclusive at some point. That I think the same thing, Sony, so don't get mad at me. Um, let's go ahead and get into this article, man. Senator Kevin Kramer is the latest politician to call out Sony PlayStation over its exclusive gaming deals, adding to the bizarre side drama spinning out of Microsoft's $69 billion dollar attempt to buy Activision Blizzard. Kramer sent a letter to Sony CEO Ken, uh, yeah, Kenichiro Yoshida expressing concern about Sony's efforts to protect its gaming console business from competition. Kramer is asking Sony to provide quote-unquote unredacted copies of quote-unquote all agreements that provide Sony with an exclusive right to distribute a game developed by an independent publisher meaning deals behind PlayStation exclusive games like Final Fantasy 16, I believe. That isn't also announced for Microsoft's Xbox. He's also asking for agreements that bar publishers from releasing games on rival subscription or streaming services like Xbox Game Pass. Kramer also wants to see Sony's internal strategy documents around his 2022 purchase of Bungie, plus, quote-unquote, all correspondence, end quote, with federal or state regulators over competition in gaming. Well. That's a lot. Continuing on here. This comes as Sony opposes Microsoft's thing. Like I said earlier, Sony has pressed regulators in the UK, EU, and US to block the deal out of concern and to let Microsoft buy its way to an overwhelming advantage, especially if it pulls Activision's Call of Duty franchise from PlayStation consoles. Microsoft has denied it will make Call of Duty exclusive. So the reason why his interest in his, what he wants to know is important is because you know, there's a lot that goes into the video game industry and in the end, in the industry, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> in the industry, you know, you have a lot of things at play, right? There's a lot at play. So in his letter, Kramer justifies weighing in on Sony's conduct by noting that the game industry has a $20.6 million impact on the state's economy and is responsible for 221 jobs with the potential to grow 6,300 jobs in the next 10 years. And this is one of those factors. So you gotta, you guys gotta keep in, uh, keep in mind that all these, that Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, et cetera, et cetera, they got, especially if you big like them, you got these situations where you might provide a job and now you are so much of the revenue of the state, of the country, of the, uh, not the estate. What's the word I'm looking for? I can't fit. Words are escaping me. They running away from me today. But when you are in these places around the world and you are a big factor in the revenue of that state or just that land, that area, whatever it is, you kind of got to you got to play ball a little bit. And the fact here, when it comes to the political side of things, what does it say? North Dakota? What does it say? North Dakota? Let me see. Let me see, North Dakota. Yeah, it said North Dakota. Y'all in the middle of nowhere, first and foremost. So 6,300 jobs in the next 10 years, that is a lot of jobs. But um, relax, bro, number one. Ain't nothing going to happen to the jobs because of this deal. I'm pretty sure. Nothing is going to happen, number one. Number two, what's important about what he asked that I want to know as well is this right here. Let me uh, go ahead and um, let me go ahead right here. Kramer also wants to see Sony's inter internal, I know I, I repeated that like six times, my fault. Sony's internal strategy documents around its 2022 purchase of Bungie, plus quote unquote, all correspondence in quote with federal or state regulators over competition in gaming. That's what I want to see. I'm concerned about, I'm interested in a lot of this stuff too, not because I want Microsoft to get Activision Blizzard or I want them to get Call of Duty, no. For a long time, we have known Sony has dominance in the gaming space. For, we've known this for years. Sony has dominance in the space having these exclusive titles. Let's go ahead and take a look at some exclusive titles. I'm on the official PlayStation Store. You got The Last of Us, on, and this is on their PlayStation console exclusives. God of War Ragnarok is on here on this list. The Last of Us Part 1, The Tomorrow Children, Valkyrie Elysium, Inscription, Stray, what else? Ghostwire Tokyo, Blood Hut, Uncharted, Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Horizon, Verizon, Zero Dawn, Ghost of Tsushima. If you knew here, I, I, re, I uh, if you knew here, I call these names, I call these games whatever I feel like calling them, and that's what they call it. Uh, it's funny to me. 
It ain't got to be funny to you. That's completely fine. But it's Ghost of Tsushima until further notice. Unless one of them people say, hey, I'm offended and I got to have a conversation with somebody, then I'll change it. But yeah, but some of these games, Returnal, Returnal 2, Last of Us Part 2, et cetera, et cetera, Ratchet and Clank, you know what I'm saying? Ratchet and Blank, you know what I'm talking about? So this is just an example of some titles, right? That are not on Xbox. They may be on PC. They may be on GFN. They may be, you know, Steam, Epic. They may be somewhere else, but they're not on uh, Xbox. They're not on the Xbox. And we've known Sony been moving like this pretty much since day one. So I kind of want to look at that paperwork too, because I kind of want to pick up some tips of the trade. I ain't even going to lie. I want to pick up the tips and tricks because y'all been running stuff like that for a long time. Now I know what y'all, now it's a lot of false information going around on Twitter and on the interwebs about who's the big dog and what. So let me put this into perspective for y'all. I'm going to go big. I'm going to go uh, big screen real quick. If I'm going big screen, I'm going to go big screen real quick. So the net worth of, the net worth of, oh, apparently my screen then froze and I ain't even know it. So, uh, you need know it. So it just is what it is, man. We, we just, uh, we just froze screen up here. So sorry. And my bad for everybody on the visual experience. We just froze up shouty. So, um, I'm gonna continue going though. I'm gonna just continue going. So on the, uh, so here's the thing. Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, I believe. Nintendo, actually, I don't know Nintendo's. But Sony has a net worth of like 150 billion, uh, something like that. They have a net worth, something like that. And if memory serves me correct, Microsoft has like a two trillion net worth evaluation, some some crazy like that. But they got way more than uh than Sony and then Nintendo. Like I said, I forgot Nintendo's. With that being said, when it comes to the gaming market, Sony pretty much has a dominant share of that. Now, remember when I told y'all that uh, the Saudis have $10 billion more dollars than, uh, than Microsoft had for the acquisition of, uh, what was that? I just said it last episode. I forgot. But y'all know that they have $10 more billion dollars than that. So just to put things into perspective, when it comes to the gaming space, Microsoft, you know, they were, like I told y'all, they was late to the game already. When you go back, when you do your history and you do your research, and you go back in, back in the day, it was the Atari and Nintendo and the ColecoVision and all that stuff that was popping. Sony ain't come till after that. Microsoft ain't come till after that. Nintendo already been in the game. Atari been in the game. This is why y'all see the news reports and headlines talking about, oh, Atari anniversary. Y'all thinking Atari ain't popular. No, Atari is popular. Like Atari is, they've been here since been here since been pimping. Okay? If you know where that's from, shout out to you. Oh man, I'm uber tripping. I'm really, 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 really tripping. I ain't even had a button zone. Oh man, this episode is all messed up. But you know, it's all good though. It's all good though. This episode is all messed up. With that being said, what y'all got to understand is this. What you have to understand is this. Once Sony jumped in the game, they been moving like, like they just been, hey look, come rock with us. And you ain't gonna need to go nowhere else. Prime example, y'all ain't never seen paper soldiers, not paper soldiers, but y'all ain't never seen state property. Get down or lay down. Look, it's enough. No, it, it, what, what was Beans doing? Hey, you work for me now or you get out the way. Like, that's just what it is. Like, you work for me now or you get out the way. Sony kind of been like that, in my opinion. You know, that's just kind of how they come and not necessarily bogarting people and bullying people, but it's like, They've been making these deals. They've had, you know, exclusive titles. And just since day one, they've had exclusive titles. They had all the titles. Everybody wanted to play the PS2. Everybody wants to whatever. Like everybody on Twitter be like, oh, oh man, the 360 was better than the PS3. No, it wasn't. It didn't come with a it didn't come with a hard drive. Stop it. And you had to double pay on your internet and your no. No, 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 no. The PS3 way better than 360. Now that we out that the, the way. The point of the matter is, this is what I'm like. These deals, these exclusive titles that Sony been having for a long time, I kind of want to see how they've been getting that off. I, I'm with Kramer on this one. I want to see how you've been getting that off. 
you can you can ship them to me. I ain't gonna leak them. I ain't none of these politicians. I just want them because they'll mess with me. I'm end up deleting the files by accident. What the hell? I'm end up deleting the files by accident. I ain't even gonna lie to you. But um, with that being said, though, um, yeah, man, that I definitely want to see that. But he also want, Kramer wants unredacted copies of all agreements that provide Sony with an exclusive right to distribute a game developed by an independent publisher, meaning deals behind PlayStation exclusives like Final Fantasy 16, et cetera, et cetera. So that's something else that I'm kind of interested in because it's like, all right, I want to see how you've been getting it off in whatever the case, because these companies and these, de these developers and publishers been agreeing to it. So like this is this like that's the because that's the catch. They've been agreeing to it. So that means either the payoff is worth it or nobody else has a better offer. Microsoft doesn't have a better offer. How many like y'all got to remember the last console to come out or the last person to put out a console was Microsoft. You had Atari, you had the ColecoVision, you had all this stuff. Then you had SNES and Sega and then you had Nintendo. Then Sony came in, and then after Sony, Microsoft came in. And that was pretty much it. And it's been Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft the whole time. Now, Microsoft coming in late in the game, you gotta remember, they're not necessarily a video game company, necessarily Sony, not the same either. But with that being said, Microsoft always been behind. And I've been telling y'all this, I tell y'all almost every episode, Microsoft been behind the whole time. They've been behind the whole time. And not only have they been behind, but with Kramer asking for all this information and all these unredacted copies and this, that, and the third, guess what? Microsoft may have never had a better offer until today. It might not be until today, in the day and age of today, 2022, 23, 21, that they might have had a better offer for people in the gaming industry. Now, if you think I'm lying, Go ahead and talk to an independent developer. Talk to a gaming developer. Talk to an indie game developer. Talk to somebody. Try and get some information. Like, what was the deal? What's, what was that? Because one thing with Stadia was a lot of people said the business model was bad. But then when you think about it, there were indie developers and people who, and uh, companies and publishers of games that people play talking about the, the, uh, the money split, talking about the financials. Like, hey, it's actually beneficial to do this. It's actually beneficial over here. Now, you know, we actually getting paid more or this is that blah, 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 blah. You can even go back to the, um, the stadia, not the stadia state of plays. You can even go back to their uh, presentations or whatever, where they talked about onboarding and they talked about how, um, developers and publishers could get more for their stuff. Cause mind you, Google does a great job with facilitating the independent games and just games in general with the Google play store. Granted, some stuff is scammy, but do we know the i uh, the iPhone the App Store may or may not be better? It may or may not be better. That's up to personal debate, uh, but that's a personal choice. But with that being said, if they can offer, like that's the the offer is the point I'm making. It's been decades since Sony and Microsoft been in the game in the video game industry. It's been decades. It's been decades, plural, multiple multiple choice, letter D, all of the above. Now they have a better, now they have an offer. Now they have an offer, which is juicy. So, I, and, and the thing is, I want Microsoft to, you know, have something up under their belt. But at the same time, when you, I said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. When you wanna play with the big dogs, you gotta play by big dog rules. You can't be sitting here wanting to play with the big dogs and then, Say, oh, uh, y'all should take it easy on me. What? No. Well, damn. Yeah, well, damn. Yeah, no, we ain't taking it easy. You want to play? Play then. Because we playing, and now we, hey, this you in the game for real. You wanted to be in the game, now you in the game. This is what's been going on in the game. And this is how you going to have to play. Now, unless you want to come, you know, come through the game and, you know, play a different angle. I mean, you could play a different angle. It's no guarantee that different angle is or is not going to work. And that's the whole gamble you got to take once you win, once you win the game for real. So, you know, with all this being said, who is the target audience is the other, is the other big factor in this because 
once again, like I told y'all about, about Saudi Arabia getting in the gaming industry, you know, wanting to build it up out there. They have a a, a, a bigger hill to climb because what, what genre, what do you go for? If you're going to start publishing, developing games from out there, what do you focus on? Do you focus on the battle royale? Do you focus on the younger kids? Do you focus on the older people? Do you like you got all these choices and things to, to make and, and to invest in and start pushing out? Because in all these different numbers, you go you got certain projections for different uh different numbers and different uh generations and age groups. That's what I was looking for. Generations and age groups. So with that being said, you know, I think what everybody gonna do in the gaming industry period is just focus on uh multiplayer. They're going to keep focusing on multiplayer because usually with higher numbers become higher, come higher results. Meaning if you have 50% of people playing this and you invest into that 50%, you will have more of a return than investing in 20 to 30% of something. And you know what I'm saying? Cause 20 to 30% is a smaller number. So on average, you would get a smaller return. From time to time, you can invest into a smaller per portion and get two to three to four to five to six, eight X and on back. You know, that is possible. But when you're talking about billions of dollars on the table, you're not really trying to waste all of that. And that's kind of the other reason why Stadia went down. Google and the whole Stadia thing came at a, a very particular time. And it was just, and it kind of was the wrong time. But they thugged it and they only lasted three years, which was cool. And at the end of the day, it's a, it's a money, it, it, you know, when you got the budget, you got the budget. So how much more money you want to bleed into keeping this alive or whatever the case may be, man. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's just a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you are in or are not aware of and that you might have to speculate on and be like, okay, well, it could be this. It could be this. It could be this. It could be that. Tell you like this, whatever has the higher percentage of actually being something that is happening or can happen, that's probably what it is or what it's going to be. What the hell? Hold up. But that's going to do it for this episode of the Gamers Day. Appreciate everybody for coming in, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe wherever you are at. The power of editing for the visual, for the visual boys. I solved it once again. <laughs> All right, man. I'm going to catch y'all next time, though. Go.